I have two questions to ask you. Um, the first one is, um, before you know, I was trying to, to get in the peace or getting uh, the happiness or getting um, um, uh, ex ecstasy, some experience. But then now somehow I see those are only the frequent of the awareness, which appears in awareness. And that the awareness... The peace and happiness are... It is the fragrant. The fragrance. The fragrant. Of of appearing the, uh, in awareness. In, yeah, in the awareness. And the awareness is, is the normal seeing. Is... Normal seeing. It's just mm -hmm. like... Normal seeing. Normal seeing. Is, um, of course, there are some con experiences can happen, but it's the seeing in. Is still a normal scene, so that's I don't know if this is right or not. That's how I feel. Um, yes, when you say um, uh, peace and happiness are the fragrance of awareness, right? The appearing in awareness. I, I like the first part of that statement that peace and happiness are the fragrance of awareness, but they are not appearances in awareness. If they were, they would be temporary states that came and went. They are the very nature of awareness itself. Very nature. Itself. But okay. they're only, we only call them peace and happiness from the point of view of the finite mind that experiences disturbance and misery. So by contrast with the disturbance, the agitation and the misery that the finite mind experiences, we call the nature of awareness peace and happiness. But really, as we said this morning, those terms, peace and happiness, are uh, too positive a statement, really, to make about awareness. It, it, they're not, they are not attributes of awareness. They are the very nature of awareness described by the finite mind. The best the finite mind can do is say, the nature of awareness is peace and happiness. From awareness's point of view, it knows nothing of peace and happiness because it knows nothing of misery and agitation. Right. It, it, right. Peace and happiness are, are its natural state, whereas for the point of view of the mind, peace and happiness are marvelous experiences that happen from time to time. From the point of view of awareness, it, it, it doesn't conceptualize an experience called peace and happiness because happy, peace and happiness is its nature. The sun knows nothing of light and warmth. We think the sun is light and hot. From our perspective, the sun seems to be light and hot. But if you ask the sun, what is your experience of itself? It would n not mention anything to do with light or heat. Because light and heat are its natural condition. It cannot separate itself from light and heat and say, I am hot and light. It cannot conceptualize itself because it is too c we can only conceptualize something that is at a distance from ourself. When something is identical to ourselves, we cannot stand back from it and give it a name. So awareness, if you asked awareness, what is your experience of yourself, it would always remain silent. Right, right. So um, for me, it seems like uh, the awareness is the normal seeing. Is that right? It's the uh, natural uh, condition. It is natural. It's the natural yeah. condition. Uh, awareness is, is our yeah. natural it's not our natural state because yeah. all states come and go, but it is, right. it is the natural condition of ourselves. Right, okay. But that is, I don't mean to imply by that that all of this is somehow unnatural because uh, we could say that awareness has two conditions uh, at rest and in motion. In the Gospel of St. Thomas, when Jesus' disciples ask him, when people ask you, he ask us who you are, what shall we say? And Jesus replies, Tell them that I am a movement and a rest. So there is consciousness in motion. Sorry, consciousness at rest. That is pure consciousness, Shiva. And there is the consciousness in motion, the activity of consciousness. That is experience or Shakti. So although the when we say the natural <coughs> condition of consciousness is at rest. It is not meant to imply that somehow experience is unnatural. It is also, it is, it is natural for 
Shiva to dance in the form of Shakti. It is mm. natural for consciousness to assume the form of mind. Okay. It is not a mistake. Um, the next question is, um, even though I, uh, you know, th this kind of thing goes on for quite some time and happens every day, um, but still, um, I still, how do I say that, uh, still standing in the, uh, heavily identified with the, this the person. Um, even though from the, from, from the scene, it clearly shows that the person is illusion. Does, is not, um, is not really exist as, as we, we normally think. Um, it's, but still, never, <laughs> never, nevertheless, I'm still heavily uh, in this identification. Yeah. Imagine that Imagine that you are a nurse and that when you go to, to your hospital in the morning to, to work, you put on your, 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 your nurse's uniform and at that moment you become a nurse. You seem to become a nurse. You step into the role. But when you go home in the evening and you take off your uniform, you are no longer a nurse. You're just a woman. This is just an analogy, yes? Now, consider that being a woman, being a person, is also a kind of costume that you put on. That you put on your thoughts and feelings. You put on your sensation, you consciousness. Clothe yourself in thoughts and feelings, in sensations and perceptions, in activities and relationships. And as a result, you seem to become a person, just as, in the analogy, you, the person, put on the costume of a nurse, and as a result, you seem to become a nurse. You even say, when somebody asks you who you are, you say, I am a nurse. Well, you're not essentially a nurse. Before you are a nurse, you are a woman, relatively speaking. Yes, the woman, the being a nurse is not inherent in being a woman. But being a woman is inherent in being a nurse. Yes? Mm -hmm. So you consciousness, you put on your thoughts, feelings, sensations and perceptions. And as a result, you seem to become a person. You, you put on a costume. And you, you seem to limit yourself by doing so. So the costume that you put on, the person, is not inherent in consciousness. But consciousness is inherent in the person. So you feel that, that your whole body is full of yourself. And you are right. It is, the body is full of ourself. That's why most people feel, I am the body. Because the body is full of, the, of ourself. Just like the nurse is full of the woman. Every part of the nurse is filled by the woman. Yes, but the woman has limited herself by putting on the, the costume of the nurse. But it's when the nurse says, the reason she says, I am a nurse, is because that she feels that the woman she truly is fills up the entire character of the nurse. It does fill up the entire character. The woman does fill up the entire character of the nurse, but she is not limited by the character. She can take the nurse's costume off without ceasing to be the, the woman. Do, do you get the analogy? Uh, yes, I I do. Um, but my I think my question uh, would be, um, how do I uh, cure this illusion? By um, seeing its reality. How, how do you cure the belief that what you see in front of you on the TV screen is a three-dimensional landscape? By going up to it and touching it and seeing that it is a two-dimensional screen. In other words, what cures you from the illusion of the three-dimensional landscape, seeing the reality of the two-dimensional screen. What is it that cures you from the illusion of separation, seeing the reality of yourself? See, I, 
I, well, the, the scene occurred every day and just so vividly to see, you know, I am this, this pure, formless Take scene. your stand there. Stand yeah. as that. Know yourself as that. See that your thoughts, your feelings, your sensations and perceptions, your activities and relationships, none of them are essential to you. They are added to you when you wake up in the morning and they are removed from you when you fall asleep at night. In fact, every time a thought leaves, it is removed from you. Your, your experience all throughout the day, innumerable times during the day, your thoughts, feelings, sensations and perceptions are being removed from you. And then a new one is added to you. But you never go anywhere. You are always the same. Just see that. Take your stand as the woman, not the nurse. You are not essentially a nurse. You are essentially a woman, in, in, in the analogy. You are not essentially a cluster of thoughts, sensations and perceptions. You are essentially consciousness. See that. And then you can go to work in the hospital. You can put on the costume of being a nurse. But you always feel, I am a woman. You don't feel, I am essentially a nurse. So it's the same here. We always feel, I am consciousness, although we can put on thoughts, feelings, activities and relationships. We can play the role of being a person without allowing our identity to lose itself to the individual person. And that enables us to play the role as a person with love and intelligence. So for the, uh, for the shift to, to happen, and uh, does that require some grace? Basically, it's the, it's the shift. It has to, you know, sometimes when the shift occurred uh, for, for a short time, I can see so clearly what the, the, the whole thing, but it comes it's, back it's quickly. True. It, it's true. It's all grace, but sometimes grace takes the form of the efforts that you, as an apparent person, have to make in order to realize your true nature. But some, sometimes I feel like why, um, it's counter Why effect. any but? Why just listen to what I've just said? Okay. <coughs> it's all grace, but sometimes that grace takes the form of the efforts that you, as an apparent person, have to make in order to realize your true nature. In other words, if there seems to be an effort that needs to be made, make it. Later on, you will realize that you were not progressing towards God. God was reeling you in all the time. 